Robert Olin Butler's 1995 short story, Jealous Husband Returns in Form of Parrot, has achieved widespread reprinting and inclusion in anthologies. Reflective of Butler's thematic tendencies, it delves into concepts of alienation, desire, and the complexities of interpersonal communication. Butler, a renowned American author, claimed the 1992 Pulitzer Prize for fiction with his collection A Good Scent from a Strange Mountain, delving into the lives of Vietnamese immigrants in the United States. In contrast, Jealous Husband unfolds a fairy tale esque narrative, where a man's demise leads to his reincarnation as a parrot, subsequently purchased by his former wife. Struggling to convey his emotions to the woman he still loves, the avian protagonist meets a tragic end, suggesting an implicit act of self-destruction. This gripping tale delves into humanity's yearning for connection, the fear surrounding such intimacy, and the intricate dance between unspoken thoughts and verbal expression. The story commences within the confines of a pet store, narrated by the protagonist who, once human, now inhabits the form of a parrot. While the specifics of this transformation remain elusive, the narrator's opening line encapsulates his frustration, I can never quite say as much as I know. Hindered by his avian limitations in language and expression, the narrator's encounter with his former wife triggers a cascade of jealousy upon seeing her accompanied by another man, exactly the type he had always feared she desired. As a human, he would clandestinely inspect their shared spaces for signs of infidelity, obsessing over traces of other men's presence, driven by his insecurities. Despite his transformation, the narrator finds himself back in the home he once shared with his wife, now witnessing the complexities of her life from a new, confined perspective. Subsequently, the narrative tracks the protagonist's existence as a bird within his former wife's residence. Content with his giant cage adorned with an array of toys, such as rawhide and knotted rope, the narrator indulges in activities that satisfy both his avian instincts and residual human desires. When thoughts of his former wife's potential liaisons with other men arise, he finds solace in gnawing relentlessly at his toys, channeling his frustration. Memories of events preceding his premature demise resurface, his wife's mention of a new guy in her workplace shipping department triggered his customary, explosive jealousy, exacerbated by her admiration of the co-worker's luxurious car. Concealing his insecurity and rage, the narrator sequestered himself in the bathroom, masking his turmoil from his wife. Suspecting her of rendezvousing with the co-worker during a shopping excursion, he clandestinely investigated the man's identity and residence, eventually perching in a backyard tree to spy through a window. A failed attempt to gain a better vantage point led to his fatal fall, transforming him into a bird with lingering human thoughts and emotions, perpetually trapped within the confines of his former home. Despite his avian form, remnants of his human existence persist. His cage now occupies the space once inhabited by his pool table, and his inability to peer into his former wife's bedroom exacerbates his torment as she entertains various suitors. Envisioning escape into the boundless sky, the narrator's attempts at flight are thwarted by an invisible barrier, reinforcing his entrapment. His former wife's tender embrace, albeit born of ignorance regarding his newfound limitations, spared him from further harm. Meanwhile, her swift transition to new companions underscores the futility of his longing for comprehension. Wrestling with unspoken desires and regrets, the narrator ponders the hypothetical dialogue he would share if granted the ability to communicate, acknowledging his past failure to articulate his emotions even in human form. His parrot mind now acknowledges the root of his jealousy and chronic fear of his former wife's thoughts wandering to other men, recognizing it as a profound emotional dependency cultivated throughout their marriage. Vulnerable and reliant like a fledgling bird, he couldn't bear the notion of her affection straying elsewhere. Yearning to convey this depth of feeling to her, despite his linguistic limitations, the narrator recently stumbled upon a fitting word, mere moments ago, his former wife introduced her latest paramour, a fair-skinned man with a southern drawl, bedecked in cowboy regalia. Greeting the man with a sly quip, the narrator relished the clever transformation of a snack name into a subtle slight. Gazing at the cerulean sky, reminiscent of a blue-front Amazon parrot he once observed, he recalls the avian's fleeting affection for a rival, resigning himself to the inevitability of heartbreak. Comforting himself with the familiar words bestowed upon him by his former wife upon purchase, pretty bird, he longs to shield her vulnerability, wishing he could offer his own feathers as protection. Attempting communication through his limited repertoire of bird phrases, hello, pretty bird, up, poor baby, he struggles to articulate his sentiments, 
hello, I say, meaning, you are still connected to me. Observing the man's nudity, he instinctively labels his genitalia as a peanut, a gesture lost on his oblivious former wife. Left alone as his former wife retreats to the bedroom with her companion, the narrator confronts the stark reality that his heart's desires will forever elude expression. Contemplating escape, he stands poised on his cage door, yearning to break through the invisible barrier separating him from freedom. Determined to defy his captivity, he resolves to hurl himself against the unforgiving glass. With a bittersweet farewell, pretty bird. Bad bird. Good night. The story draws to a poignant close. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.